morning, everybody. I toast to you and all you do. I hope you're having a fantastic day today. Many toasts. I know I'm not making videos as often, but right now it's only nine degrees outside. So I've tried to find a place. We'll see if this works. Uh, it's not as pretty or aesthetic. And I'm not outside, so I really don't like making videos inside. I don't know why, but anyways. Um, <clears throat> for real, it's like nine degrees outside. It's freezing. So many blessings. Let's all stay warm. Hmm. So today I'm just going to make a video about mantras and I might do that too, but I just watched a video from She is of the Woods, um, amazing channel. Uh, she's talking about book recommendations. And so I've been thinking a lot about, um, I like themes cause it makes it easier for me to make videos. So I was thinking about the next theme to be building a practice. And so that's why I was going to start with mantras. Mantras are a great way to start your day and start your practice and help you um, be who you want to be. And so that's really helpful um, and simple and something you can do every day. Uh, but after watching her video about book recommendations, I had to say this. Um, so we're going to kind of talk about that first. Maybe it'll be two videos. Who knows? Anyway, so... When you are first starting out, you are looking for a book to read. You are looking for information. You are looking, you just, you want to consume the information. You're looking, bring it to me, bring it to me, bring it to me. <clears throat> and then you read the book and you start taking in those opinions. And that's right, they're opinions. Um, even I have to remind people all the time and they're like, well, my doctor said, I'm like, your doctor is making an educated guess. This is their opinion. I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying to keep that in mind. It doesn't matter what field you're in, what expertise you're looking to study, what no, what, no matter what it is, um, or how educated somebody is in that topic. Again, they are just making educated guesses. They're assuming based on the information that they have. And for some things, like in medicine, we can say indefinite well. Mm, not indefinitely, but we can say with some confidence certain things. Um, we have seen that 99% of the time this is the way that it works. And therefore we can say with some confidence that I have learned this and that's the way that it works. Now when it comes to magic and your spirituality, I don't think there is a 99%. I don't think that you could... So. You can't take it into scientific criteria. Okay, I am a scientist. I love science. I love biology. I love, I love microbiology. I think it's fascinating. I love the chemistry, you know, biochemistry. Oh my God, I could get lost for hours. It's amazing. I find it fascinating. And those things we can prove. We can say without a doubt, when you mix oxygen and hydrogen, it makes water. Not 100% of the time, there's a specific rate. But <clears throat> my brain just like looked for that number because it's in my brain somewhere. But anyway, so um, <laughs> when it comes to doing magic, there there's not a 99%. You can't take all of the anecdotal records and say, this is what it is. An anecdotal, um, just in case you don't know, anecdotal is like the story I told you. Um, this is my experience and I'm going to share that with you. And then you take in all of those experiences and you say, okay, collectively, everybody who's gone through this experience falls into one of these two categories. But with magic, you can't always say that. You can't say, let's use Loki as an example. So I work with Loki. Um, people are always like, what? Uh, Non-Loki workers think of Loki's energy like in the movie because that's the example that they have. Oh, this is a great example. Okay, so people have seen Thor. People have seen the Avengers. And I would guess that most people around the world have seen or heard of or seen a commercial for or in some way seen this. So they have that impression of Loki. But that's not Loki. That is a Hollywood depiction of a character taken out of context and put into this story. Now, don't get me wrong. I love the Avengers. I love all of the stories. I love that they bring in 
different mythologies. And I like it. I think it's fun. I think it's a good way to continue on these stories. However, <clears throat> when you work with Loki, not from the movies, when you work with Loki, his energy is very unique. And he will come to you however it works for you. For me, when my world is in complete chaos, spinning in all directions, and I can't seem to get my head together, and I, everything is breaking, <laughs> I light my Loki candle. I have a green candle, I keep it just for Loki, and I call to Loki, and I say, Loki, I need your help. This is too much chaos for me to handle. And he will come in, and his energy will soothe that chaotic feeling. It's like a... When I envision Loki, I envision this strong masculine energy who's kind of a smart ass and also mischievous. So he's like a young masculine energy. But he has this great ability to stand underneath a tornado and just like, ah, and hold that there and turn a tornado into a focused spiral of energy, into this bring it to a point, use that energy, and focus a chaos. Maybe it was Loki who made the glucose molecule circle. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyways, see, I love science. I just can't get away from it. And for me, my science and my spirituality very much go together. Um, and the magical things of like a circle glucose molecule instead of it being a line are magical. What, what are the odds that these, what, oh, Loki, duh, he came in and was like, yeah, that's going to be a circle. Um, uh, <laughs> sorry, that was too science nerdy. Anyways, uh, but for someone who doesn't work with Loki and they've only seen the movies, they see Loki as a maleficent god, as a, you know, he's got malice intent and he's doing things to be selfish and mean. Um, and that's not the energy of Loki at all. Um, I'm sure that's there. Loki has a very youthful, masculine energy that can be over the top at times. Um, he is a trickster. He wants to play a joke on you. He's that, un you know, he reminds me of a little brother. I guess, as how I would describe it. He's like the little brother of the gods, and he's just like, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, okay? Um, and that's that mischievous energy that he has. But it's not malice, he's not trying to be mean, he's not an evil energy. We have to step away from this idea of good and bad when it comes to our spirituality. That's a whole other video. But anyway, so, back to what I was saying and why this is all relevant is... So when you are first starting, you go out and you pick a book. Let's say, so my first book was Scott Cunningham's Guide to Solitary Practice. I recommend it to everybody. I think that Scott Cunningham is a great author and that he will tell you his opinion. And at some point in the book, he will say, this is just my opinion and I encourage you to go out and try it yourself. Or this is just something that you should do um, or you shouldn't do or whatever. He's very much like, you have to create your practice. It's solitary because it's your practice. Um, but then, of course, I read, you know, I've read an Aleister Crowley book, and I've read Gerald Gardner books, and I've read um, Buckingham books. I mean, I think most people have B Buckham's, Buck however you say his name, uh, The Witch's Encyclopedia. Uh, I think I, that's just one of those books that's like, at some point in your practice, you have probably owned or come across or seen or whatever. You know, it's a big black book. It's got the circle on the front. Anyways. Um, and I'll never forget reading Pictish Magic by Buckham. Buck, Buck, whatever his name is. I'm not a big fan of his books. That's why I can't remember his name. He very much is of the mindset that this is the way to do it and this is the only way to do it. And if you don't do it this way, you're wrong. Um, and I've one of his books says that. It's like, if you don't do it like this, then you're wrong and it's not going to work. And I was like, wow, what a powerful statement to tell to somebody, like, do it my way or no way. Um, and that, to me, comes back to the whole idea of what opinion are you reading? What is the opinion that you are taking in? Uh, 
how much is that influencing you? So even watching my videos or watching other YouTubers or whatever, or finding people on Facebook or wherever, or reading books or whatever you're doing to bring in this information, always keep in mind that you are taking in someone's opinion and there is going to be nothing better for your practice than your experience and not someone else's opinion. So back to the she is of the woods, she is a naturalist and an herbalist and a, an amazing, just I, I really enjoy her videos, but people ask her all the time, well, what's a book that you recommend for people who are just starting out in herbalism? And she pulls out all of these books that are native identification plants to your area. And she says, it's not about going out and reading about herbology and reading about the medicinal and magical uses of a plant. It's about learning about the plants in your area so that you can walk outside and point and say, oh, that's a dandelion. Oh, that's a, that's a vervain. Oh, that's a whatever. Um, she goes out into her area and she finds herbs that I didn't even know you could grow here. She found a whole thing of wormwood growing next to some lake up in the mountains by her area. And it's a noxious weed there. <laughs> We pay a lot of money at the store for some wormwood. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> uh, but her whole point was if you, okay, let's say that you've only picked up Buckham, Buckham books and Gerald Gardner's and books that are of that um, traditional Wiccan nature, structured Wiccan. Um, guard or whatever it's called. Anyways, uh, and that's all that you've ever read. When I come to you and I say something whimsical like, you don't have to cast circle and stand like that. And you can just make circle wherever you are and open up your space and create sacred space and do all of these things without an altar or without sacrifice or without a partner or without being naked because... Um, I have a good friend. I love her to death. She, I, she, amazing. But she was so funny. We did a community ritual and I was like, just come dressed how you're comfortable. And she was like, cause she's a Gardarian, Geraldian, however you say that. So she practices a traditional Gerald Gardner Wiccan form of mat, uh, practice, whatever, but they do it naked. So she's like, so can I come naked? I was like, mm. You know, I don't think the people at the Masonic Center are going to appreciate that. I'm pretty sure we have to wear clothes. It's public. And we got a good laugh out of it. But <laughs> in her personal practice, that's how she does it. I work with another group and they do grown-up rituals where they all get together sky clad and they do a very traditional sky clad Wiccan magic. And that's beautiful. Um, it's beautiful to express your spirituality in whatever way you express it. Uh but if that's the only thing that you've ever read and you are a firm believer that you have to be naked and make sacrifice and say the oath in just the right way in order to open circle and make sacred space, when someone like me comes to you and says, no, no, I stomp my feet twice on the ground, bam, sacred space, that's all I need. And I have my clothes on. <laughs> they, they're like, oh, I don't believe that. And there becomes this like belief battle because everybody's got their own way of doing it. But if all you've ever read is that one thing, then that's how you're going to believe it. I was a firm believer for many, many, many moons in my practice that I could not do any kind of magic for myself because that would be selfish. And I couldn't do any kind of magic unless I thoroughly thought out how that would affect the free will of all of the people around me because it would be blasphemous for me to cast magic that would unintentionally harm other people. And the karmatic retribution for that would be grand. Um, I've seen a lot of, we call, I call them fluffy bunny witches. And I used to be a fluffy bunny witch. And that's why I don't feel like I'm being mean or mad saying that. It's really a thing. If You know, there are fluffy witches who really, really take that harm none to a crazy extent. They're like, oh, you can't practice the witch's creed unless you're a vegan. And then I want to be like, well, you know, I put a lot of time and energy into spending time with my plants. My plants all have names. Well, I don't name them, but they have like 
energies that I work with and I talk to and I spend time with. And for a really long time, it was hard for me to harvest. And it was actually just last year where I really saw the bounty in harvesting and not in what I took, but in what it did to the plant. Um, my lemon verbena plant that I brought inside for the wintertime, I just pruned it and now it looks amazing. And I don't know why I didn't prune it sooner. I waited too long and now it's super woody. But because I didn't want to hurt the plant, I was like, oh, I can't hurt the plant. But it doesn't. It actually helps the plant. Um, my I got little fir, fir trees in the front yard. They're like little tiny Christmas trees. But when I water them, I like violently stick the hose and I'm like, beat the tree with the hose. My husband one day, he's like, what are you doing? You're like hurting the tree. I'm like, no, if the tree was in the wild, it would have, you know, squirrels and all kinds of other animals that would be brushing up against it and eating off of it and rubbing it and like pushing it, knocking it over and stepping on it and doing all of these things because in nature there isn't someone there to protect it and put up a little fence and say, don't hurt this. Um, and so the first year we lived here and I didn't do that. They didn't have any growth. Uh, they stayed about the same size. They were fine. There's a lot of deadness on the inside. And so then I just started beating my trees, like not malicely, but like <laughs> it's a little rougher with the trees. And they've all grown a foot last year. They're much happier. There's a lot less dead stuff on the inside. They're just happier trees because I roughed them up a little bit because you don't have to be nice all the time. That's not what this is all about. Uh, unless that's all you know. So, okay, now that I'm totally rambling, I'm gonna have to name this video the Ramblings of the Phoenix again, because that's where this is going. But back to the point, when you are starting out your practice and when you are building your practice and you're gonna go and you're gonna pick up a book, yes, read the book. Then get a book by a different author and read that book. And then get a book by a different author and read that book. Then go out and watch some YouTube videos from different people. Learn from different people. Um, I, uh, sorry, I was just thinking about fairs and all of the amazing different people that come up. And some of the most amazing people that I've learned from are people that you would not have expected to have that kind of wisdom or people who you wouldn't even think were magical or people who are so extremely magical that you're like, and by extremely magical, I mean like they wear it on their face and they're, they've got the headdress and they walk around like the grand prismo all the time. And you're like, oh, here they go. But then you get to talking to them and they really have this amazing perspective and they can teach you a lot and you have to step out of your comfort zone and what you know in order to see that and understand that and experience that. So when you're starting out your practice or when you're experienced in your practice, whatever it may be, the goal is to continue to expand your knowledge. The goal is to go out and experience that for yourself. You can't, you could read every single Scott Cunningham book he's ever he ever put out uh, and not fully experience your spirituality because you're so stuck in his spirituality. Uh, I got stuck in DJ Conway's spirituality for a while and I read all of her books and I was super into it and I was like, oh, I'm really into this Celtic thing and I'm, oh, that's all, that's it. I don't even know what caused me to step away from that, but I just had a moment where I was like, oh, well, this is like, I need something different. Uh, oh no, I do know. I read The Wind is My Mother. Amazing book. Most definitely recommend, recommend it. Amazing. Uh, changed my perspective on my practice a lot because it brought in Native American practices, which this is the land that I live on. I live on the land where the Native Americans lived that I honor the same land that they honor and reading that book opened my eyes up to an amazing energy of the land that I live on and to a different concept in magic and making magic more a part of your everyday life and less ritualistic 
um, which was amazing. And that was just in one perspective. And then each new perspective that you read brings on new information, helps you create something that is you. Uh, we have so many people who are like, I'm an eclectic pagan, I'm an eclectic this. Um, and sometimes I just want to be like, so you're you. Like, <laughs> uh, and that's great because you've gone out and experienced more things. And the more things that you experience, the more eclectic your practice will become because it will just be more of a representation of the energy that is you. And since everybody's energy is so unique, then your own spirituality is going to be so unique. And no matter whose video you watch or what book you read, you're not going to find someone who's ideally perfect to you. Um, I found several wonderful people who I really enjoy watching. Uh, one of them, uh, Lauren, uh, what it's, I think it's Blue Sage on here, complete opposite of my practice. In fact, on Facebook and groups, we have gotten into arguments. Like, no. <laughs> We, we disagree with each other, but we both learn from each other, uh, and it's amazing. And he's a person that you would never be like, oh, these two. <laughs> but I feel like if we were to sit down face to face, we could probably talk for hours and just have conversation after conversation about the amazingness of the world and the differences of our opinions. Uh, I love watching his videos because they are a different perspective. Um, what do I think it's like boss, Witch, also same thing, very different person from who I am, very just in her nature, but I love, I love the way that she talks to her spirit guides. And for me, it was inspiring to allow more open communication between me and my guides and not so formal and not so like, okay, guides, I'm ready to talk to you, but to just listen when they're talking to me. Uh, which is amazing. And I would never have had that realization if I hadn't watched one of her videos where she was like, I was doing something and my spirit guide was like, in my face, bam, this is it. And I was like, oh my God, that happens to me. Maybe I should listen. <laughs> and since I started listening, it's been an amazing change. Last year was very interesting in my spirituality for a number of reasons, but mostly because of listening to my spirit guides, of allowing that a part of my spirituality to really blossom and grow and go because I don't need, I didn't, I don't need to be restrained in that nature. People think I'm crazy already. So if I'm talking to my spirit guides, what's, whatever. Anyways, so back to the whole point, let's round this back out. Everybody always wants to know, what book should I read? Or what, where should I go? Or wow, oh, okay, so pick five authors and read a book from each of them. Uh, magic books read pretty quickly. They're not like most magic books. Okay, I'm reading one right now that's West African magic that's like intense. It's written by archeologists. And I have to reread parts of it. I'm like, what the heck did they just say? But anyways, uh, most of them are pretty easy to read, so you can just get through them and read the next one and then read the next one. And the more you read, the easier they are to read because the general stuff is the same in all of them. It's the specifics, it's the nitty gritty, it's the nuances, it's the eclecticness of each person that makes their book unique. Um, I mean, I could in a short generic time be like, this is what it is to have magical practice. And it would be the same information you'd find in every Wiccan book that you pick up, and I'm talking just the basics, the foundation. But that is not going to explain to you your spirituality. You have to go out and put that stuff to use. You have to go out and experience that. You have to go out and see things from another perspective in order to grow your perspective and be able to see the world in that light. I think about it like putting on different colored glasses. You know, when you read a DJ Conway book, you put on rose colored glasses that are beautiful and the world is beautiful and we're going to do soul healing and we're going to connect with the earth and we're going to do these things. And that's beautiful. And I encourage that. You know, you put on the red glasses when you read a Buckham, Buckingham book, Buckham book, because he's very much like it has to be this way. You know, if you want to go the libertarian route, read the Crowley book. Do it. It's amazing. You'll learn something new. You'll learn about high magic. You'll learn about something different. 
you know, Thelma, Thelmaism, Thelma, whatever is amazing. Uh, and just brings on a different perspective. It's definitely more of a challenging thing because it has a lot of layers and, and formalities. Uh, you know, read a Native American book. Read a, a Peruvian book. Peruvian shamanism is taking a huge rise in popularity, and you can find lots of books about it. I'm reading one about West African magic right now. There are so many sources of information out there, especially with the internet. Um, I love that I'm reading this book and I've talked to people who live in Nigeria or from, you know, other parts of the African coastline right there. I talked to them, not just the ones who are like, I'm an African prince, but like real people who are not scammers because there are real nice people everywhere in the world uh, who answer your questions. I had a question about the Yoruban, Yoruba, your whatever, uh, Yoruban, Yoruba. I don't know how you would say that. How you would conjugate that word? Anyways, about one of their holidays, about one of their um, or she, or, or oh whatever. I'm butchering all these words. They're not. I don't speak that language. I try really hard to say it right. But anyway, so they're mediary gods that they celebrate. And I had a question about one of the holidays and the things that I was reading were very whitewashed. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense and I don't understand. And I feel like I'm missing a big part of the ceremony. And so I reached out to someone and he answered me with like a textbook of information about the holiday and it was beautiful and amazing. I was like, oh my God. And he filled in all of the gaps because this is someone who actually does this every day. I mean, he doesn't celebrate that holiday every day, but this is his spirituality. That's his faith. He is an active member of the community. And so when I have a question like that, he can answer them. So you can reach out and find this information everywhere. There are so many sources available. So really what I'm saying is it's not just one book that you should read. It's a hundred books that you should read. It's not just one author that I would recommend. I recommend reading a bunch of books by a bunch of different authors. Um, I've named several already. Um, Amber Raven Wolf, I think is her name, is a great one. Uh, she does the Green Magic. Also super entertaining books to read. Um, I love the Lululin Almanacs. I think they're great. Um, they have a collective of lots of different authors that come together. I used to get them every year and read them every year. They're amazing. Uh, just lots of different perspectives. So what's important is that you go out and you see a different perspective. You go out and you read another book. You go out and you learn something and you experience something and you don't get stuck in one person's opinions. Because if all you read is Scott Cunningham books, then you are recreating his opinion. And that's great if that's what really calls to you. But not even Scott Cunningham wanted you to do that. Or maybe Bucko. Maybe. <laughs> Crowley would really probably prefer that. No, Crowley would prefer you not read any books. You just do what he does. Be free. Uh, <laughs> anyways, I also recommend watching some documentaries and learning about these people who you're reading their books. Uh, people are like, oh, Wiccan is an ancient religion. Well, no, it's not. It's actually one of the newer religions. It's not as new as, like, Scientology, but... It is a newer religion. It was created by Gerald Gardner after he came back from Africa, after he went out and studied as an archeologist in different areas of learning about these, this magic. And then he brought that back. He read uh, King Solomon's magical guide to high magic, whatever it is, which is a Christian magic. This is, they're, they're Catholics or whatever. Um, this is magic that was done in the church. And so he took that and he took the West African magic and he put it together and he created Wiccan in the 30s. It's not even 100 years old yet. So it's important that you know what you're learning about. Um, there was a recent rise last year, which I think was amazing, about non-ethnic people writing about ethnic religions. And so check your authors. If you want to learn about hoodoo, you should probably read a book written by a hoodoo practitioner who's Rhinobite. Um, you, 
if you're going to read about Shinto, you should read a book written by somebody who's from Japan who actually practices it and has grown up in it and has lived that their whole life. I'm not saying that white people can't experience other spiritualities. I'm just saying that the best source of information, you know, get it from the horse's mouth. You don't wait, you know, the game of telephone. We don't want that with our spiritual information. We want it from where it comes from. I like reading archaeological books versus books about Celtic mythology. Okay, that's that's a really common one. Okay, there's so many Celts. Celtic reconstructionism, Celtic this, Norse reconstructionism, all of those different things. You want to learn about Norse magic? There's a great YouTube channel. I'm pretty sure her name is like Freya the Witch. But she lives this. That's what she does every day in Norway. And that's what she does. So that's where you should get your hand. Go find it from someone like that. Um, go out and do more. So, all right. I'm going to stop now. I'm freezing. My toes are freezing. Like I said, it's only 8 degrees, 9 degrees outside. So, uh, I'm in the garage, so I'm only halfway outside. Uh, anyways, so I toast to you and all you do. I encourage you to go out and read a different book. Read something new. And, uh, and create a spirituality that's yours and not someone else's. So many blessings to you and all you do. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment. Tell me what your favorite, who your favorite author is, what book made the most influence in your life, all of that kind of stuff. Um, because that information, one, I love reading new books and I love reading them off of the other people's recommendations. And two, somebody else reading that comment will be like, oh, I need that book. That's amazing. So you are amazing and I appreciate you being here and thank you for staying if you stayed this whole time and many blessings to you.